Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 22 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about reading images into Python. And of course, for any image processing, you have to load the image first into the appropriate software. And uh, so it makes sense for us to cover this topic of reading images. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk only about reading uh, standard images like uh, TIFF, JPEG, and uh, PNG, and so on but not proprietary images. I'll save that for the next tutorial. When I say proprietary images, that means .czi for called Zeiss or Zeiss images. So let's jump into Spider to understand how to read these images. Now, I mentioned this a couple of times in the past where I said, okay, the two primary libraries that we are concerned about for image processing is scikit-image and OpenCV. Okay, if you would like to install scikit image, go ahead and pip install scikit image from your command, uh, from your console. And for OpenCV, pip install OpenCV Python. Okay, remember the way you uh, import these two libraries is different than the way you install it. That's why I'm giving you these commands up here. Okay, so once you install it, you can go ahead and uh, read your images. Now, before moving on, I would like to mention one point. You may have heard of a pillow library for image processing, which is great actually for image transformations and a whole bunch of other tasks. The reason I stay away from pillow is because it does not import images as NumPy arrays. It imports it as an object. You can still convert that into NumPy array by just uh, uh, using the command numpy.asArray and then giving it whatever the image name is or image variable is over there. So it's still possible. It's just an extra step. And also, if you convert it using asArray, uh, it doesn't convert it the right way, meaning remember in the last tutorial, a few tutorials ago, I talked about how the values are between zero and one uh, floating point if you use scikit image. So it adds additional confusion when you do these type of operations. So if you, it, especially at the beginning, I would stay away from those, okay, from pillow. So now let's uh, start by focusing on scikit image and then I'll talk about OpenCV. The way you import scikit image once it's installed is import sk image. That imports the entire library. Now let's import from SK image, let's import IO. That's it. Okay. If you import SK image, it imports everything. Then you can still call and use it. Nothing wrong with that. But I'd like to import only the uh, classes or only the functions that I'm interested in. Okay. So let's import IO. It keeps things simple. Now I'm going to assign a variable IMG to my image. So when the image is loaded, my IMG would be an array. If it is a black and white two-dimensional image, my IMG would be a two-dimensional NumPy array. If it's a RGB image, then it would be a three-dimensional NumPy array, okay? So how do we get there? So let's go ahead and do io.imread, okay? And for this, I actually, I know I would not remember the file name, so I actually written it over there. So here, here it is. So let's, let's go ahead and run this these two lines okay now if you look up here in fact let's go ahead and uh, print image dot shape so this way you can clearly see what the shape of the image is so when you do img dot shape or any numpy array dot shape it actually gives you what the shape is as you can see the shape of this numpy array that we called img is 1104 by 1376 by 3. I have to remind you that this is not XYZ. This is Y, X, and number of channels. Okay. So this is the dimensions is 1104 in height for the image, 1376 in width of the image, and the three are the three channels, which is red, green, and blue. Okay, so that's our image here. So that's how you read an image. And you can see I'm importing this image using io.imread. So this image is an unsigned integer eight. Again, just to remind you, that means the values go from zero to 255. If I open this array, you can see that the values are all between zero to 255, okay? Now you can, let me refer to my notes, you can convert this into floating point. And the way you convert this into floating point is 
The proper way to convert this into floating point is by importing image as float from SK image. In fact, you don't need an additional line. Okay, let's remove this line. Let's copy this and import multiple things at the same time. Okay, in the single line. This is how you import multiple things in a single line. Import from SK image, import IO, comma, image as float. These two. Now, if I run this, image two. Oh, sorry, we didn't run this line first. So let's run that line and let's run this line here. So my image two is also the same dimensions because we're not changing the dimensions. We're just changing the type of the value. And if you look at this, again, the values are between zero and one, okay? So the values are all between zero and one. So when you convert an image using image as float in scikit image, it automatically scales images between zero to one, okay? Now, do not do this. I think I have written what not to do, yeah. Do not do this image as type, okay? Here, numpy dot as array. What happens when you do as, okay? So let's run this and look at image three. So I'm going to convert my image, the original image, using as type and converting it to float. So if you look at image three, the values, they're still 769, 61, you see, except it's seven point, 69 point. They're all float. They're all rightfully, it converted into a floating point number, but it did not scale it to between zero to 255. That's why use do not do this use image as float when you're converting images from one type to the other, okay? What else? Uh, uh, now you can convert back, obviously. So let's convert back to uh, the original sort of format, 8-bit. Uh, so let's do image as ubyte and import that here. Slowly you see how for almost every program, you know, we'll have this line from SK image, import IO, image as float, image as U byte. So we'll convert images as float, do certain stuff, math, convert them back to U byte if you want to save it as an image format, okay? So now I'm converting this image, image two, back to 8-bit. So let's run this. And if you look up here, oh, name as U byte is not defined. Again, I do the same mistake again. Let's run this line and then let's run this line again. Okay, so now we should see our image as 8-bit, the values are same as our original image. Okay, so we converted this image back into, into uh, an 8-bit image. Okay, so this is all about scikit image in terms of how to load it. Okay, now let's look at how to use OpenCV. I'm gonna leave this open because I would like to show you one quick thing. In fact, let's remove these lines and let me add Scikit image. Now, uh, uh, OpenCV. Now, the way you import OpenCV is by typing import CV2 here. Okay. Even though you, when you install Scikit image, you pip install Scikit dash image, but then you call it as SK image. This is the confusing part about this library. Same with OpenCV. To install it, you do OpenCV dash Python, but then to call it, you call it import CV2. Please get used to this. Okay. Now, Let's actually, uh, uh, let me, uh, let's do this, yeah. So how do you read an image? Exactly, pretty much the same thing, okay? Instead of io.imread, you're going to do cv2.imread, okay? By the way, io.imread, here you can read images as gray, okay? Equals to true. Again, I'll, I'll, save, I'll save that for, again, when we get to scikit image portion of the tutorial later on. But for uh, OpenCV, since I already have it, let me go ahead and explain it, okay? I'm gonna call this as gray image, cv2.imread, just like io.imread. Just like io.imread, you're giving the same thing, except I put comma zero. In fact, you don't need to do that. Let's not complicate things. Let's just run these two lines of code. And then up here, you can see my gray image, sorry, I shouldn't have called this gray image, like we could have called it image, but it doesn't matter. My gray image is not gray right now. It's exactly same as uh, my image. In fact, this is very important. Let's do 
image cv2 okay let's do this image cv2 when i run this let's erase all and let's run the whole thing so you we only see these two okay so now i have image which is using scikit image image cv2 using open cv now if you look at this the dimensions are the same but the values here are different my 7 and 11 it went all the way to the end 6154 came all the way to the front that's because OpenCV reads images as BGR instead of RGB. I don't know why they did that, but that's a confusion that some people have. OpenCV reads BGR instead of RGB. That's why the central channel, which is green, remained the same, but the first one, red, and the last one, blue, swapped. Okay? So that's one thing to note. Now, if you would like to read images as grayscale, even in scikit image, you can do it, but it's easy in OpenCV, you just put comma zero, okay? So now when we run this line, you see my gray image here is just 1104 by 1376. The number of three channels are gone and I have different values over here, okay? So that's my gray image. If you want uh, this to be color image, just put value of one over there, okay? So that's the, let's go ahead and do this, value of one. By default, if you don't give anything, the value is one, okay? It reads it as color image if it is color, if it is grayscale, it reads it as grayscale, okay? So if you don't want, you don't have to put it, but sometimes it makes sense to force it to gray or color. Okay, so once you read it, uh, we already looked at the types, gray and color images. Now, uh, let's also finish this one line here. So finally, because this is a BGR image, okay, you can convert this to RGB if you want, okay? OpenCV, it's cv2.cvt color, okay? So you take your color image and then you apply BGR to RGB, okay? This line, again, I use this so many times, it's almost uh, one thing that you need to memorize. BGR to RGB or BGR to HSV, you can convert images from one color scale to other color scale for many reasons, okay, which we'll discuss later on. But the point here is you can read images in scikit image or OpenCV. Both of these save images as are open images as NumPy arrays, meaning they're ready for us to process. Scikit image, you can use it to convert images from uh, 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 integers to floats and others, but it automatically rescales it between zero to one if you do that, which is a good thing. You can always convert the float back to uh, uh, unsigned integer eight, which is your zero to 255 scale using scikit image and the functions we just tested it out. OpenCV is also a great library to import images, except you need to realize that it doesn't read RGB, it reads images as BGR. So when you open the image, it may look weird because your reds are blue and your blues are red. Okay, so that's the only thing, but you can actually convert them from uh, BGR to RGB if you want. For mathematical purposes, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, you just apply the math and you can save. And also when you save the images using OpenCV, it saves them as BGR. So as long as you stick with OpenCV for your entire process, you won't even notice that it's BGR and you know, and not RGB. But the problem occurs when you use OpenCV to open images, use scikit image to per, uh, perform certain actions and then use OpenCV, you know, uh, and then use uh, some other method to actually save it as an image, let's say, okay? So we'll, we'll see these things later on as we again go ahead and start processing the images. So until now, I hope you know how to read images and what to expect when images are loaded using scikit image and OpenCV. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk about opening proprietary images, which is .czi, for example, uh, for Zeiss images. And I'll also show you how to open omitif images. This way you can open, I showed you TIFF example, but you can open PNG, JPEG, or any of these most common image formats. So thank you very much. And uh, let's uh, learn how to open proprietary images in the next tutorial, thanks.